Hey ladies, Mal here along with some of my PS4 buddies. From left to right we have Neve, Crazy Chicken Lady, myself, Miss Adita, and Nikita. We are dedicated raiders who test out various methods and roles because we love to raid. Um, the ladies would like to show you some footage of a recent Oryx hard mode completion along with some pointers for a really smooth run. As a disclaimer, I'd like to add that we prefer these particular strategies and teach them when we train or Sherpa. Uh, you may come across other groups that prefer to do things differently, and that's totally okay. Uh, this video is intended as an additional resource for people interested in raiding or being Sherpa for their moments of triumph in particular. Um, each week, the raid rotates a special bonus challenge between the War Priest, Golgoroth, and Oryx. We use the challenge method for Oryx on every run, whether it's his week or not. Um, we find that it's just easier, um, and we like routine. It requires that we quickly kill the ogres in four rounds and let the bombs stack up so we detonate 16 at once. Uh, this will reward you with an extra drop and unlocks a calcify fragment. So let's see how it's done. To open, um, Ace is on her hunter, which is a common choice for a runner. Um, strategic supers are important, so she's going to be using her bow to create orbs. In the beginning, you'll see she's the only one shooting at the thralls. It's her job to gather them around her and throw a tether down. Um, and that will create extra orbs to kick off the round and help everybody out. We prefer Light of the Pack and Bloodbound as perk settings, uh, which keep all the damage together among the thralls and also generate more orbs. You will see her when she jumps up, follow the hand um, as it pulls back off the plate. And hustle is really important here. So by getting airborne before his hand comes up, it will save you time on your run and it will prevent you from taking a lot of damage. We'll go over that later. Um, the platforms need to be triggered in counterclockwise order, which is like a left-handed turn or anti-clockwise. So you'll notice that it's the same direction the runner's going and it's always that way around the room. If you turn left, that's the way everybody triggers the platforms. can see Ace grabbing the aura from the vessel. I notice there's a lot of touch of malice here. Everybody yeah. in it? Uh, most of us are running a touch of malice. It's not a requirement in a raid, um, but the reason a lot of us use it is that you can keep up continuous fire without having to stop and reload which is really helpful for keeping his chest open at the end. And then we're just letting the thralls come in. Um, we only shoot the things that are shooting back at us, and we let the thralls come in so that when we get near the end of this part of the, the feed, we can tether like what's happening and create some more orbs, which helps our as titans as the get hunter. the balls back. As long as the hunter has the right settings. Yes. And we like Light of the Pack, and blood Light of the pack and bloodbound. Mm -hmm. So Light of the Pack is what creates the additional orbs and bloodbound shares damage between everything that's tethered so that it's easier to get everything down. And um, again, we have the, the knights coming up before we get pulled into the shade. You want to make sure that you're taking care of ads outside the shade until you get pulled in uh, so that they are not harassing your teammates inside. Those ads were cleared so fast. Yep. You did a pretty good job that round. I'm just sort of keeping an eye out on the ads and see if I can get them right back at pulled in. Yep. By the time I got pulled in, they'd almost had him down, so there wasn't a lot for me to do. Um, so the second round. He starts on the front of one side, and then the second round is always the back of the same side. So I'm kind of following to where he's headed just to show you, and then I'm heading back to my own plate. And I see that your runner gets a good start, especially a hunter with a triple jump, getting in the air and following his hand up. Really hustling to the plate yeah. gives you a much faster run. Yep. 
And even though we're careful to use good uh, verbal communication with one up, two up, and three up, I'm also still looking at my uh, other platform people ahead of me just so I can get a, a gauge on when they're starting to jump and time appropriately. Always getting back to the bubbles when your runner calls that they have it is of utmost importance. You can ask for help with your nights, nights if you need them, but it's hard to recover if you die on your plate because you stay too long. And you know, sometimes in the in the cluster of voices, you can lose that runner saying that they've got it. So we kind of make a game out of it, of really announcing that you have it and chatting about it. So if you're the runner or you're listening for a runner, we use multiple verbal cues because that is an important time point that you really need to coordinate and not miss. And um, it just get, it can get lost, especially with the plates and ogres and knights. That cue gets lost more, I think, in hard mode than normal mode. And if you are the runner, see how quickly you can shout. I gotta get out. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a race between us to see who gets to shout that fastest. But <laughs> and again with the knights, waiting for a good shot sometimes is better than just pummeling them because then they don't fall off. Right. Okay, that one had fallen off. Um, we had to, to kind of chase him down a little bit. So waiting just a little bit for him to turn slightly so that you can see him and get a good crit shot is generally better. And that was an unfortunate landing, but it looks like you stuck it pretty well. Yeah, I survived the experience. He yeah, already he had slammed. Already slammed at that point. Good. Although, running a Warlock, that's part of my job, is to be able to self-res if I need to take that hit. And I think one of the next rounds I do... Yeah, you get it on the next one. So, third round. Uh, Oryx starts on the initial plate he was on, on the front side, whichever mm -hmm. the one he picked first was. And so, you're going to see a very similar hustle to the first round we did. Mm-hmm. And you can see I was checking where my plate two person was so that when I saw a chicken launch into the air, I was right behind her so that I could land quickly and help out. Um, it's just more of a personal preference. It's not necessarily necessary, but I like to help the other folks with their ogre. Um, I feel like as, as quickly as we can get everything down, uh, the better for everybody. Well, it gives the Titans more time to look for fourth night also. Yep. And that is usually something that we leave to our Titans the, the night for the fourth platform. Um, and so they're usually keeping an eye out for that. I see a check on orbs there. Make sure all the bombs are around. Yep. yep. Dance so party in the middle. And you'll notice that we're not shooting in his chest right now. Um, because we're not trying to detonate bombs yet, it's not really necessary to do that. So that's why we don't really worry about it. Um, you could, of course, but the damage that you're doing at this point isn't enough to really do much. It's the bombs that do the damage. So I don't know, that's why we're not doing it right now. But when we go to detonate the bombs, that keeping constant damage on his chest is absolutely critical to making sure that we detonate successfully. And I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm checking up on chicken. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, no, that's fine. This is what I realized that she wasn't using line of the pack. It's like, why are we not getting orbs? I am absolutely that kind of snoop. Sorry in advance. <laughs> that is how you do good cause... training. And that was a perfect example of why a self res warlock is preferred in the shade. Yep. And part of the reason. Um, that we minimize some of our call-outs, too, is in that cluster of voices. We're hoping that a warlock is present, and you're going to back away and let the warlock rush the shade um, and take that hit just to get it over with. 
So calling that you're in or out really isn't necessary unless you're the warlock. What we really care about or are concerned about, is there a warlock in there to protect everybody? Yes or no? No. Yep. And the reason you see me switching weapons back and forth is that I'm using the raid machine gun that automatically reloads itself, so I'll empty my clip and then I'll switch to my sniper to get some high impact shots on him, and then I'll go back to my machine gun when it's reloaded itself. So for the fourth round, he goes to the first the front plate on the opposite side of where he's been starting. So you can see that now I'm on the left side where I've been on the right side before, uh, but it's the same setup otherwise in terms of the order. I noticed you travel to the back side of your plate to take care of your knight. Yep, so that outside edge that's closer to the, to the back part of the arena is where you have the best shot on him. And you don't have to rush out to this vessel. Some people do, and that just puts you in danger. Wait for him to come to you. There's enough DPS on him. You really don't need to sacrifice yourself just right. to get him down. The hunter or the runner should take care of that. Yep. And so this is the point where we're really going to focus on staggering him. And then we do a five-second call-out, which you can't hear me do, but that's what I'm doing right now to kill those ads. At the end of the five, we run for our bombs. And I will always reorient myself in the direction I need to run so that I don't get lost. And keep his chest open. You should have right. the runner and a titan in the center. As I, came, as I came back in, the runner and the titan were doing that. Um, and then I just we continue to help out until he goes down. Then we reload everything we've got because he is going to pop back up at the front. And I backed up a little bit because I know there's bubble. We just start throwing everything we've got at him. Excellent. Down he goes. You make it look easy. And I went right to get to get ammo, and then realized I should probably show that he is actually dead. Look, there he goes. <laughs> so, ladies, any other tips you have for newbies that are trying out Oryx hard mode? Um. It's okay, like you saw that we didn't all make it back to the bubble. Um, the reason that happened was that we, Neve was making sure that all, her name came up four times because she's detonating four bombs. Um, that That's what we're trying to accomplish, and so making sure that you don't fail early on your team is, is important. And, you know, if one or two people go down, that's, that's fine. You'll have enough DPS on him to get him down at the very end. So it's more important that you get all of those four bombs detonated than, than bailing on your team, especially for challenge mode, because you've only really got that one opportunity to do it, um, the 16 at once. One of the ways that since Nikita mentioned orienting herself when she's in the, the bomb is turning yourself around until you see there's an opposite name tag, then you know when you just go hop right. right out of it, and you're going forward back towards the middle. Yep. I also, as you can see, yeah. didn't get too far in. Um, I know some people go in sand smack in the middle of the bombs, and that's not necessary. They have a fairly wide um, band around them that you can sort of see. It gets, it's like a little black, grayish sort of band around them. As long as you're within that radius, you're fine. As long as you see that you're channeling corrupted light. So if you go all the way in to get blinded, you don't need to. You can get back without having to do that. And so you don't need to blind yourself. Very true, and that's something that people don't mention when they first start running this raid, especially for the bomb detonation, is that there is a very big radius around the bomb that's the trigger plate area that you need to be in. And so I always recommend, before you start, especially with new people, kick off Oryx, take an ogre down, and then everybody go to that bomb, check it out, investigate it, snoop it, set it off and wipe your team, but at least get a visual on it and show everybody what it looks like before you go wasting four rounds and then people not knowing where their bombs are. And the other thing um, that I want to shout out for our Warlocks is if you don't make it back to the middle and you wipe, do not immediately pop your res because the reason that's happening probably is that there's a delay in some of the bombs. And so most of them have gone off, but not all of them have gone off. So if you pop back up immediately, the next the bomb is going to go off and take you right back out. So wait until all bombs have truly detonated and then come back up. That way you can actually help out at the end. And if you're really not sure... Anybody... Go ahead. 
Oh, I don't think anybody's mentioned this, but um, when you're sitting in the aura of invincibility, waiting for thralls, there's also a no melee mm. rule. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We have all learned from personal experience that just due to some weird physics and mechanics in the game, if you melee inside one of those auras, you can actually fling people out, sometimes including your aura holder, and then suddenly you have no invincibility, and uh, you die. So. And as you've seen on my... Mm -hmm. and sometimes just stay put until it's over with. Just hold still. Yep. Yeah, I usually will tell people, freeze, hold still, stop, or something in the shade to remind them where... As soon as he dies, in case you miss that cue of him screeching or you didn't have eyes on him when he went down, I tell people, hold still. We, you don't need to melee, you don't need to shoot, just take it. Because the thralls may travel with you, they may not. You may end up taking damage. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. Um, yeah, sometimes you land really on a rock. Yeah. And yeah. if you're ever curious about what that looks like, I've got plenty of bloopers, uh, reels that I'm willing to share with people, <laughs> of people mailing each other into things. Uh along with the uh, runner who occasionally will use a sword to take down their vessel, they will continue to carry it with them into the shade instead of stopping to switch weapons, which is fine. But if you put it on, just remember, if you swing that while you're leaving the shade, you can throw your entire team off the map. And I have another video of that where two of us went flying, one hit a rock and died. I managed to survive and have a really good view of the shenanigans. But uh, be careful with your melees and how you treat your fire team with the sword. Don't get too close. Yep. Well, I think uh, something we we didn't talk about, um, and I, I don't know if I caught it because I was always running to get to my plate, but the timing on the Titan bubbles is, for us, we're trying to put those two overlapping bubbles that are blessing and weapons right as he slams down. So when his fist impacts that plate, that's when our titans are popping their bubbles. And we do that so that, time frame-wise, they're falling down right when his chest opens, and so we're not losing, um, we're not getting blocked by those bubbles in order to, to DPS his chest. And I think both of those also have the duration on, too. Yeah. They should have Bastion and Illuminated on. Bastion makes it last longer and Illuminated uh, increases the impact of, of what's going on in the bubble. I, so, I can't read you. I'm looking the wrong goddamn way. It was just a picture. It's okay. I'm looking the wrong way. I'm... Thank you. <laughs> just... Album cover. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Good luck reading. Oh, Perfect. Sorry, that's the wrong button. Oh, okay, close enough. <laughs> you just the wrong way. The wrong button. Happy concerts. It's 4 a.m. I'm sorry. Oh, good Bye, everybody.